OK, so we're going to solve this problem where we need to find the coefficient of x to the power of 98 when we expand out all of these brackets. So we can write this product a little bit more concisely using product notation. So we could write this as the product, let's say if we start with k is 1, we'd be looking at over all of these odd numbers, we'd be taking away, we can call this 2k minus 1. So you see, substituting k is 1, we get 1, then we get 3, and so on. And this would go all the way up to k is 100, so 2 times 100 minus 1 gives us the 199 term there. So then you can see that we've got 100 terms being multiplied together. So something we could do to start off that's a bit easier is we could find the coefficient of x to the power of 100. So you can imagine just expanding all of this by hand. You would just have to multiply all of these 100 x's together. So the coefficient of x to the 100 is just 1. And similarly, if we look at the power of 99, what's the coefficient of x to the 99? In order to get x to the 99 when you're expanding all of these brackets, you would need to take one of these as the number and then all of the others would need to be the x in the product. So you could take, for example, negative 1 and multiply that by all the other 999 x's, or you could have negative 3 times the other 999 x's, and so on. So this would give you a coefficient of negative 1, negative 3, then we add all of these together, you get negative 1, take away 3, take away 5, and so on, all the way to taking away 199. So we could calculate this, and this would give us the coefficient of x to the power of 99. And then similarly, if we want to actually find the coefficient of x to the power of 98, we just need to think to get an x to the power of 98, we now take two of these terms in these brackets that aren't actually x's. So we would have the first possibility would be negative 1 times negative 3, for example, and then we could also have negative 1 times negative 5, and so on. So all of the ones including negative 1 will go up to negative 1 times negative 199. Then there's still all of the other pairs as well, so we'd have negative 3 times negative 5 up to negative 3 times negative 199. So this covers all the ones using negative 3, and we've already done negative 1 and negative 3. And then we would keep going along like this until the very last product pair we'd have would be negative 197 times negative 199. So we need to find a way of adding all of these up to calculate what is our coefficient of x to the 98 going to be. And you can perhaps see some similarity with our coefficient of x to the 99 and 98 with Vieta's formula. So here for this first one, this is just the negative sum of our roots, and then for the coefficient of x to the 98, this is the sum of all of the product pairs of the roots of this. So the roots here would be 1, 3, 5, up to 199. So if we can find a nice way of calculating this, let's just write this out. So we can write this without the negative, so we can write it as 1 times 3, and then we've got to have plus 1 times 5, so the negatives always cancel in these products. And this goes all the way up to 1 times 199, just to make this a bit nicer to work with. And we've also got plus 3 times 5, and all of these with 3s up to 3 times 199. And then we go along all the way up until the final one is plus 197 times 199. So what we really need to do now is evaluate this sum to find what the coefficient of x to the 98 is going to be. There's actually some nice structure we can take advantage of here, which is to notice that our sum looks like a lot of the terms that you would get if we were to expand these brackets by hand. So expanding 1 plus 3 up to 199 by the sum of the same odd numbers. But you can see, of course, we're missing some terms as well. So the terms that we're missing, first of all, along the diagonal, we're missing some square numbers. So we're missing the sum of all of these odd squares, 5 squared. This goes all the way down to we've got 197 squared and finally 199 squared. So we're missing those in the middle. But then over on the left hand side we're also missing some terms. But these terms are quite interesting because we've got, we'd perhaps write this as 3 times 1 rather than 1 times 3, but here this is the same as having the 1 times 3 we've got over there, and here we can write this next missing term as 1 times 5. So you can see we're just getting repeats of all of the terms we had earlier. This one would be 3 times 5, and this would go all the way down to having 197 times 199, so you can see there's a nice symmetry here, and you'd have in the bottom left corner this would be 1 times 199. So we're just getting actually two copies of the sum that we're trying to calculate then in the black, plus we've also got this sum of all the squares along the diagonal. 
And this is actually a special case of a more general identity. So if you wanted to generalize this, you could also say that if you've got the sum of some terms all squared, like how we've got these brackets being square, being multiplied by themselves, you can always rewrite this as having the sum of each term individually squared, so like the diagonal, and then plus two lots of these sums along these triangular regions. We'd write this as the sum of i less than j of ai times aj. So this is the more general structure that we're building on here. But to actually apply this to our problem now, we can see that if we expand these two brackets, we can now write, let's draw a line here, so we can write underneath, you've got one up to 199 in brackets all squared, our original expression is going to be, first of all, we've got the sum of all of these squares. We've got one squared up to 199 squared. So this is the diagonal. And then we've also got two lots of the sum we're interested in. So we can say two lots of, if we call this coefficient c. So then we can solve this to find c. We can get c on its own just by subtracting and dividing by two. So then we get c is going to be a half times this sum, one plus up to 199 all squared, minus the sum of all of these squares from one squared up to 199 squared. So we can actually calculate this sum quite easily, the 1 plus 3 up to 199, the sum of all of these odd numbers, just by splitting them up into pairs like this. So you've got 3 plus 197 makes 200, so does 1 plus 199, so would 5 and 195, and similarly all the way up to 99 plus 101. So all of these pairs make 200. And how many pairs have we got? Well, we had 100 numbers total, so half of this is 50. So we've got 50 times 200, which gives us a total of 10,000 then for this sum here. So we can even go one step further and just before we clear some space for our rest of our work, we can write this as 10,000 squared, take away the sum of all of these squares of odd numbers up to 199 squared. And now we need to evaluate this sum of all of these odd squares. And this would be really nice if we were looking at the sum of all consecutive integers, because there's actually a formula for this. We have 1 squared plus 2 squared. It's the sum of all odd and even integers up to n squared. There's a well-known formula for this of a sixth times n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1. So we won't prove this result. This is something quite standard we might be expected to draw on, but I'll include a link in the description if you want to see where this is coming from. So you could prove this by induction, for example. So we could use this to get the total sum then for going from 1 up to, we'll actually go up to 200 here. So we can write this, just write this informally of the sum of all of the integers. So this is 1 squared plus 2 squared, and we go up to 200 here, just so we've got the same number of odd and even terms. So this is just using this formula now with n is 200, so you get a sixth times 200 times 201, and then 2n plus 1 gives us a 401. So that's the sum of all of these. And to work out the sum of all of our even numbers, we can still use this formula, actually, because if we write this out, and again, just informally writing this as our sum of all of the evens, when we write these as 2 squared plus 4 squared and so on up to 200 squared, you could actually take out a factor of 2 squared from each of these, because they're all even. So if we take out a factor of 4, the 2 squared just becomes 1 squared, the 4 squared just becomes 2 squared, the next one 6 squared would just become 3 squared. So you can see we can relate the sum of the even squares to the sum of all of the consecutive squares. The only difference here is instead of going up to 200 squared, when we take out the factor of 2 squared there, this goes down to the sum up to 100 squared. So then we can use this formula again with n is 100 now, so we've got 4 times, so right, this is 4 sixths times n is 100, and we've got n plus 1 is 101, and finally 2n plus 1 is 201. But you'll see there's quite a bit of similarity between these two. We can actually factorise this quite nicely so that we can make the subtraction a little bit nicer, because what we're going to do next is if we do the sum of all of these minus the sum of the even squares, we're going to be left with exactly the sum of the odd squares, which is what we're trying to calculate. So we can factorise this. First of all, to get this factor of 1 sixth, we can take this 4 and we could multiply this 100 by 2 to turn it into a 200. So 100 times that by this 2 gives us a 200. And we'll do the same with this 101 so that we've effectively taken our 4 and turned it into a 2 and a 2. So this gives us now 200 and then we can take this 201 term so that it matches with 
the next term 201 and then finally we've just got 202 as the last term. So then we can write this again informally we can just say the sum of all of our odd terms this is what we're trying to calculate here we can write this as we've got this common factor of a sixth times 200 times 201 so this is common to both the sum of all and the sum of the evens and then we just need to do 400 minus 202 which is 199 and for reasons that will become clear in a moment we'll write 199 as actually 200 take away 1 and the reason we'll do this is so that when we eventually subtract this it just makes it a little bit nicer to do by hand that this turns a small step into an addition so here to deal with this factor of a sixth we could divide 200 by 2 and 201 by 3 if we like so then we'd have 100 times 201 divided by 3 is 67 then we're still multiplying this by 200 take away 1 and then we can actually evaluate this 100 times 67 times 200 so we get 134 followed by four zeros now so this gives us 1,340,000 and then take away 1 times 100 times 67 to so take away 6,700 so now we can substitute this in here we'll clear some space and then just finish calculating what the final answer is then and if we expand out this 10,000 squared we're going to get 1 followed by 8 zeros so we just group these with commas like this, 100 million, and we get this take away 1,340,000. And then this is particularly nice because instead of having to do a subtraction, we can just add 6,700. So first of all, this subtraction here is going to give us 98,660,000. And then we just add 6,700 to this inside the bracket, and then we're still just dividing this by 2. So when we add these together you can see we can just concatenate this so we get 98,666,700 and we still need to just multiply this by a half now. And this one's quite nice, we can just do this as 700 divided by 2 is 350 and we get 333 and finally dividing 98 by 2 we get 49. So this is our final answer then, this is what our coefficient of x to the power of 98 is in our original expression where we're expanding the brackets.